she's dreaming of the USA. She bought again, she bought again, and she fucking for her it, to pay her it. For us, don't show me your sin, show me your sin. Life is rough, so never win, so never win. She falling, she begging, she roaming, she falling down, she rolling, she thugging, she buzzing, sweet at a time. She falling, she begging, she roaming. Once again, we're welcome to Thomas Adewumi University. You're welcome to this great institution. We please, we are pleading with you to please have your seat as allocated. Again, you're welcome to Thomas Adewumi University. The Vice Chancellor and his team are already making procession to the auditorium. So we want everyone to be settled before the arrival. If you're having difficulty getting a place to sit, you can as well approach any of the ushers. If you're having difficulty with where you're going to be seated, you can as well approach any of the ushers to direct you adequately. And again, it's a warm privilege to warmly welcome you to the Nigeria's leading light tertiary institution and the fastest growing science, technology, engineering, medicine, and innovation, the STEMI. Hello. All right, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning, everyone, and I want to officially welcome you to the first distinguished lecture at Thomas Adel University. Please, if you are standing, please, if you are standing, get yourself seated, please. In procession now, please, you should not be standing. Okay, we are already having the procession, led by the chief security officer. We have the procession led by the chief security, chief security officer, and we have the university scholars. We have Kofor Olatitilokwe Shukura. We have Olubi Oluwa Tofumi Victoria. We have Ayodele Jamima Oluwa Fola Sayomi. We have Abdullahi Faiza. We have Aluko Eriola in the procession. We have Awuya Faith in the procession also. We have Ogundola Precious. Hello, let me. We also have Oluwade Sharon. And your line, the procession. Please, let's get settled as I proceed to the front. Let's get settled. Thank you very much. Please, if you are standing. And please let us rise as the procession commences. Thank you very much. Please let us rise. Let's be on our feet. Thank you very much. Also, we have Oluwade Sharon. And your line. We have Ade Kunle Farouk Ade Bawale Oluwa Funcho Ade Niye Niola. Also, we have 
love Adeyemi Deborah. Akiola Mojisola Muyosola. We have Ojo Adekunle Ayomide. Adeshina Gloria Feyikemi. We have Ajayi Obe Taiwo. Akadi Victoria. Olariwaji Marvelous. We have Fola Omi Idris. Owolewa Yetunde Semiat. Adeshino Adejoke Oluwa Tosin. We have Akade Ewa Oluwa. Oladun Joye Esther. Oluro Timi Grace. As they continue to proceed to the front, we have Oluro Timi Grace. We have Saeed Omotayo. Mustafa Azimat. Ayobami. We have our Lord Jede Mayokun, Elizabeth Ifunaya Chiku. We have OK Oluchi Favor. We have Dada Goodness. We have Ade Yuwalu, Ade Dolapo, Ojo Ayomide. Also, we have Oyawaye Nelson. And we have Ayodele Ade Shewa. All right, behind is the moving forward is the dean of nursing science in procession, Dr. Mudukwe Aino, followed by the dean of basic medical and health sciences, Dr. Adumo, followed by the dean faculty of law, Professor Samuel Oke. Immediately after him is the distinguished Vice Chancellor Thomas Adeumi University. We have our own professor, Professor Francisca Oladipo, and we have the main man for today, that is the Lega Juggernaut. We have our own speaker, our lecturer, uh, Yusuf Ali. We say you're welcome. As we continue, please let us have our seat. Thank you very much. Yes. All right, please, for those sitting and standing at the door side, can we please get a seat, please? We will not want us to be hanging by the door side. We have reputable personalities in this hall this morning so please those standing at the doorside should please find a place to sit if you are not one of the ushers can you please kindly find a place to sit thank you very much um, for that for the brief information the land is greener on the other side but this is where we are, this is Nigeria, and the land is green, even in Nigeria. Please join me as we also rise up to take the national anthem. That is um, the professional and the normal way to start. Please join me as we take the national anthem together.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's let's clap our hands. Let's give applause. Thank you very much. Once again, you're welcome to the leading university, the university that leads and others follow. We say God bless TAU and God bless Nigeria. Thank you very much. Once again, we are quickly going to move to the introduction of guests and the establishment of protocol. Why I call on Dr. Ajibola, Dr. Ajibola, Dr. Abiodo Ajibola is the HOD of Chemical Sciences and the Director of Advanced Studies and Coordinator of the General Studies of the University. You're welcome, sir. We are all welcome to the first public lecture of its kind in TAU, Thomas Adeume University. If today is your first time stepping on our soil, we say welcome. And we pray that God will make your journey a great one when you are returning back. Yes. Establishing the protocol here, the executive governor of Kwara State is Excellency Malam Abdurazak Abdurrahman. We are expecting him, the founder of Thomas Hadeume University, engineer Dr. Johnson B.O. Hadeume, PhD, FNSE. You're welcome, sir. The Asiwaju of Ukwirisi, the Chancellor of Kwara State University, our founder. You're welcome, Daddy. You're welcome, sir. The co-founder of Thomas Adewumi University, Dr. Mrs. Gloria O. Adewumi. The chairman, board of trustees, Thomas Adewumi University, Dr. John Akonya, CON, and his eminent board members. And we have here Dr. James T. Oteride. You are welcome, Daddy. You are welcome, sir. Pro Chancellor and the Chairman of the Governing, Board, uh, Governing Council, Professor Victor Olarewaju, and his eminent council members, you are welcome. The Vice Chancellor of Thomas Adewumi University, Professor Francisca Oladipo, FNSC, FESI, FBA, ARFC. You are welcome, sir. The Hudson Registrar, Mr. Solomon Ililadewa, you're welcome. The University Bursa, Mrs. Bolanle Juniana Odeyemi. The University Liberian, Mr. Tsunde Toyese Oyedoku. Dokum. The Dean of Law, Associate Professor Oke Samuel Olubinga. You're welcome, sir. The Dean of Nursing Sciences, Dr. Mrs. Modukwe Haino. The Dean of Basic Medical and Health Sciences, Dr. Godwin Adumo. The Dean of Management and Social Sciences, Dr. James Aransiola Ishola. You're welcome, sir. The Dean of Student Affairs, Dr. Muiwa Odoaye. I welcome into our Miss Erudite Scholars, Vice Chancellors, Deputy Vice Chancellors, and all visiting bosses for this wonderful occasion. I'm going to start with the Vice Chancellor of University of Ilori, Professor Wahab. Ola Supo Egbe Wales, S.E.N. You're welcome, sir. The Vice Chancellor, Kwara State University, Professor Lukman Chimon. You're welcome, sir. The Vice Chancellor, Halikma University, Professor Noah Yusuf. The Vice Chancellor, Landmark University, 
Professor Kola Wale O Ajanaku. You're welcome. Okay. All right. The Provost College of Education, Oro, Professor Mukala Anyoda Aremu. Okay. Ably represented here. You're welcome, sir. Okay, we have here Dr. Felicia Awolola, Deputy Rector, Academics, Quara State Polytechnic, representing our Director, Engineer Jimon. You are welcome, ma. We have the Principal, Comprehensive High School, Oko, yeah, Pastor. Makajola JK, you're welcome, sir. Then TAU, welcome. Brigadier General AA Babalola, ably represented by Major AD Dauda, the Commander 22 Armor Brigade, Nigeria Army. You're welcome. <laughs> Dr. Hassan. Kalejaye, Unilori, you are welcome. Universal Filori, you are welcome, sir. Professor Rotimi Ulusonya Arise, New England Bow Lab, Boston, Massachusetts, University, uh, USA. You are welcome, sir. All right. All right. We have here our royal fathers and our honoris. I'm going to be starting with His Majesty. Oba Abdurrahim Oladile Adioti Olomu of Omoaron. You are welcome, sir. God bless you. The, His Majesty Oba Architect Olutade Oniwo of Iwo Land. You are welcome, sir. Oniwo. Okay, of Iwo. Okay, thank you. Only wo of a wo. His Majesty Oba Victor Olufemi Olawi Oloko of Okwiri. Say, you are welcome, Daddy. His Majesty Oba Johnson Dada Oloru of Oruago. You are welcome. Oloro of Urago. Standing for Olupo of Ajasheiko is His uh, Majesty Oba A.A. Junior. Olojo Iko of Egi uh, Oyo Iko. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, the principal of Taiko, Thomas Adewumi uh, International College, Dr. Omar Pariola. Oh, you're welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Yes, as people, uh, dignitaries will be stepping in, will be announcing their names gradually. And also to our eminent distinguished guest, uh, who will be presenting the first public lecture today, uh, Professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali, ASAN, the founder and sole financier of the Yusuf Olaolu Ali Foundation, the principal partner of the Yusuf Ali and Co. You are welcome, sir.
And uh, our distinguished guests will be presenting and delivering a public lecture on the decolonization, decolonization, decolonizing African education to empower the next generation. If there is any other we are going to announce here, thank you very much. You're welcome again. Can we please one more time put our hands together for Dr. Ajibola? All right, taking us further at the first public lecture at Thomas Adeumi University. Can we please join me to welcome to the microphone the distinguished Vice Chancellor for our welcome address? Distinguished guest, August visitor in the month of December, our guest lecturer, Yusuf Olaolu Ali SAN, Professor of Practice, Federal University of Yekiti. We warmly welcome you. I apologize for some mix up in the protocol. I would like to especially recognize again the presence of the Vice Chancellors of the KU8, led by our Chairman, Professor Wahab Olashukwegwewole SCN, and the TAU's big brother, the Vice Chancellor of Kwasu, Professor Shaikh Lukman Jimo. The Vice Chancellor of Landmark University is expected to send a representative. I know the Vice Chancellor of Alikma also. Uh, is expected to send a representative, so we'll recognize them as soon as they come. Um, I also would like to recognize my brother, a big brother in the profession, the newly appointed Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Jimo, Rashid Jimo. <laughs> Professor Jimo, I would like to request that you please join your colleague Vice Chancellors over here. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. <laughs> Thomas Adewumi University is a member of the consortium of universities in Quara, and so the consortium has come in a full force. We have the principal officers of University of Ilori, the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, <laughs> the Deputy Vice Chancellor Animal Services. We have the University Bossa, the University Liberian. We warmly welcome you and recognize your presence. We have a young faculty of law in this university, and uh, one of the people that ensure that we have that faculty, I would like to recognize our, the father of the faculty of law, uh, Chief KK Eleja SAN. We gave him the invite in the last minute and he honored us. We welcome our traditional rulers, our father, the Oloko of Okwerese, who looks after us, our father, the Olomu, the Oniwo. Oniwo, we welcome you and the other traditional rulers and our Oloris. Thank you all so much to all our esteemed guests. It is with great pleasure and a profound sense of honor that I welcome you all to the inaugural Distinguished University Lecture at Thomas Adewumi University, Oko Irese. Today marks a significant milestone in the rich tapestry of our academic journey. As we gather here to be here for what promises to be an enlightening discourse, by our esteemed speaker. The distinguished lecture is a testament to our commitment to fostering intellectual curiosity 
academic excellence, and the pursuit of knowledge. As a community of scholars, we believe in the transformative power of ideas and the impact they can have on shaping not only our academic pursuit, but also the broader society. The choice, which is a right choice, of our distinguished speaker, Malam Yusuf Olaolu Ali, SAN, Professor of Practice, Federal University of Yaikiti, for the first distinguished public lecture, reflects our dedication to bring in to our campus voices that are at the forefront of their respective fields. Individuals whose insights and experiences inspire us to think critically and engage meaningfully with the world around us. The choice also reinforces our commitment to continue to attract positive attention to our host community, Oko Irese. Many of the people gathered here today would not have been here if not for this public lecture. The theme of today's lecture, Decolonizing African Education to Empower the Next Generation, is particularly apt as the history of education on the African continent has been shaped by a complex interplay of colonial legacies, cultural diversity, and evolving dynamics. It is my hope that today's lecture will compel us to confront the historical imprints that still linger in our educational systems, impeding the full realization of the potentials that lie within our youth. Today's event, distinguished guests, is not merely an academic endeavor. It is a transformative act of reclaiming narratives, embracing indigenous knowledge, and empowering our students to critically engage with the world. It calls for a paradigm shift in pedagogy, curriculum design, and instruction, institutional structures. It is a call to dismantle the remnants of colonial ideologies that persists in shaping our educational framework and to pave the way for a more inclusive, culturally rich and empowering learning experience. It is an opportunity to examine the kind of education that Africa needs. We are therefore privileged to have right on our grounds one of Africa's most remarkable citizens, a legal icon, and a beacon of intellectual progress, who is described as a charismatic and inspiring educator with an unwavering commitment to advancing knowledge to share his expertise and experience and perspective with us. As we embark on this intellectual journey together, let us seize this opportunity to reflect on the importance of higher education, the pursuit of knowledge, and the role we play in shaping the future. I encourage all the members of our academic community, both here in TAU and all the other universities represented, to actively engage in the discussion that follows, fostering a spirit of dialogue and collaboration. I extend my gratitude and the gratitude of the entire university community to Professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali, SAN, for gracing us with his presence. And I warmly welcome you all, our esteemed guests, both those of you with us in this hall and those that are online. Um, as Africans, one of our defining principles is sharing of resources with our neighbor. This event is currently being streamed online, and as Africans Knowledge Hub, we'll make sure that we promote this event for globally forever in different languages and within our various networks at the different geographies. 
Just steps from this room, we have a mirror of the open courseware of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and we have students from English, Portuguese, and French-speaking African countries assessing their learning materials from our server. So we make sure that this lecture as well will be available for as part of the learning materials in the spirit of sharing, in the spirit of Africanism. Thank you all for joining us on this auspicious occasion. May this lecture be the first of many that will contribute to the intellectual vibrancy of our university. I therefore welcome you all to the first distinguished university public lecture at Thomas Adewumi University, Oku Irise. Once again, let us appreciate the Vice Chancellor, our erudite professor. That is the arrowhead of Thomas Adewumi University. We say thank you very much, and God continue to bless you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move straight to the address by the Pro Chancellor. Uh, the Pro Chancellor is a father, is a grandfather, is a mentor to virtually each and every one of us, both staff and students. So we invite our father, Professor Victor Olari Waju for his address. Please, let's welcome him to the podium. Thank you very much. Permit me to stand on the already established protocol, but I'm constrained to still make uh, some recognition. Uh, we want to thank the Vice Chancellor of the University of Elon, Professor Fewoli, and the entire entry. Because you are your baby, I know the Vice Chancellor has already expressed our gratitude, but on behalf of the Council, I'm expressing it also. We thank you for coming. <laughs> also, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Kwara State University, uh, where our Chancellor is also the Chancellor. You are welcome, and we thank you for coming. <laughs> we have among us here, the first vice chancellor of Alikma University. Most of us may not know. That's Professor Akanji. Please stand up for recognition. <laughs> After successfully being the vice chancellor at Alikma, he was also the vice chancellor of Federal University of Technology, Mena. <laughs> I always joke, I say my three time vice chancellor. I'm, 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 I'm expecting the third time. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all our royal fathers that are here by present, I say, Kadekwelonio, Kibata Kwelese. Thank you for coming. On behalf of the Governing Council of Thomas Adewumi University, Oko. I want to welcome you warmly to this, our first public lecture titled Recolonizing African Education to Empower the Next Generation. Uh, thank you. Public lecture is one of the important activities of universities. Uh, because it's one of the tripartite rules of universities, which are to teach, do research, and also community service. So the public lecture comes under the community service. Because during a public lecture like this, the public and the community are the target audience. And in such a lecture, they are enabled to get education, information, and knowledge that are profitable to direct 
on, 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 uh, contemporaneous, on, on contemporary issues, like what we are discussing today, which is education. Uh, the public and the community are hereby present, and our university uh, is quite happy that we are presenting our first public lecture. Uh, we, are happy, we are lucky that our guest lecturer, as has been described, I'm not giving the citation, the citation will be given later, is an icon in the society, is a legal luminary, is a senior advocate of Nigeria. I think I should have a round of applause for that. He's a philanthropist, and he's a lover of education. I'm going to add that he's even a man of many caps. You can see, he's a professor, he's a legal luminary, and so on and so forth. Uh, I will say something, permit me, about the guest lecturer, who is a person of uh, uh, Madam Ali, Yusuf Ali. I will say something that I've never told him before. At the University of Ife, there was this law student that came from a very poor background. I don't want to say poor family. Like most of us started early in life. It was very difficult to navigate through the legal education because many of us rallied down the student to complete the first degree. After the first degree, the mother called some of us. We didn't know the mother. We didn't know how the mother got, uh, got our telephone number. But the mother called us individually and said, please, how do we help to make sure that these students go to law school? It was difficult. But the student on herself came to my office one day and said, I'm taking a letter to Ilani. I said, for what? See, I'm taking to Madam uh, uh, Yusuf Ali's team by for support to go to. I said, okay, go. To call the whole story short, lo and behold, he got the sponsor. She got the sponsorship. <laughs> and that was how the lady went to law school. So you can see that we have a man who is large who has a very large heart, in person of Madame Yusuf Ali. That lady now is a legal practitioner. She's a happy uh, family lady, and she's a learned person. Even myself as a professor, I cannot call myself a learned person. <laughs> but the lady now is a learned person. That is Yusuf Ali for us. I'm happy that today we have among us people of high caliber. And you have seen that we are a university, very young, but we are moving at very, very jet speed. We are growing fast. We started with three faculties. Now we have six faculties. <laughs> faculty of law, faculty of engineering, Faculty of Nursing, Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Faculty of Pure and Applied Sciences, Faculty of Computing Science and Social Sciences, and we also have a Department of English and Literary Studies. So you can see we are growing fast. And you can see that we are also in a, in a peculiar geographical setting here. You can see all the green around us, very fertile land, large expanse of land. And there are several opportunities that, you know, we have here. So I'm calling every one of us on board that to come and help us in the development of the university. The, 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 the education lecture we are having today is to empower the next generation. And this university is definitely ready to do that. And we have even started. So please, when we come to you, you can come and assist us. We have hostels to build, we have lecture theaters to build, and so on and so forth. You can even endow, you can do endowment. There's so many things you can do. 
So I'm happy you are among us today. But please, when we knock on your door, I hope you'll be obliged. Of. God bless you all. Uh, I, I want everybody to be patient so that we can enjoy the lecture. And I wish us a happy return journey when we get back by the grace of God. Thank you very much and God bless. A round of applause for the Pro Chancellor and the Chairman of Governing Council. I have the singular honor to welcome Engineer Tony Lee Aduragba, representative of uh, EMIA of Ilone. You are welcome, sir. Please, a round of applause for our Chancellor and founder of Thomas Hadeume University, <laughs> Dr. JBO, Engineer, FNSC. You are welcome, sir. Your Royal Highnesses, Kadipelo Rinyosa, the Professor. I, there are so many professors here, but I want to single out my KU8 professors. Because they are, can you please stand up? KU8. The KU8. Oh, I think we have become KU9, isn't it? <laughs> KU8 plus, okay. Um, please sit down. I'm so proud of you. Um, I want to also single out my good friend, um, <laughs> well, Emma is not here, so I can, you are, you are here, my drag bar, my, I think, Tony Lea drag bar, Magaji of Ilori. <laughs> I want to single him out. It's a, it's a very good friend, he, we have so many stories to tell, and but there are, there are two people here. I cannot, they have gone higher. When we are not here, probably I know what, but um, I don't want to embarrass them because we used to drink Gary together. <laughs> <laughs> that was what our parents could afford to give to us when we go to school. Um, I want to specially glorify God for today. Um, the, I want to thank God for the person of the Vice Chancellor of this university. This young lady, <laughs> Professor Francisca Oladipo, is a gifted daughter to, by God to me. And um, it's a honor to have such an embodiment of diligence, hard work, patience, <laughs> excellence. You know, I, God will bless you more than you can ever imagine in your life. In January 1983, when I came back from England after five years, and I came to Oko, my heart sank. You can just imagine what Toko would be in 1983. That was our 40 years ago. Um, coming, just bringing somebody. I just packed my bag from England and I decided to come to Oko. Come back. Um, you know, it's the way darkness is far from light. But my mind was here because when I came, I knew the challenge was immense. What would I do? In my heart, I chose education as the means to transform my community. I decided 
I I realized that I mean the pro chancellor just spoke here. When he was in primary school, I mean I used to see him because he was much much far from me. I mean in terms of age and but he's one of my role models. The the primary school that produced us disappeared within a very very short time. And I realized that the next generation are doomed unless we do something about it. Therefore, I decided to prayerfully believe God, jump into the dark as it is, as, as, as could be into education. But God rewarded my faith. I didn't, some people think I have money. I only have, I have faith. I believe in God. I mean, those who know me, uh, the cabinets that are here who knew who can tell you where I came from. They can tell my story than myself. So, but I have faith, and for me, I got married to my wife in England, but she agreed to venture to come here, not minding the difficulties. So, the reason why I went that memory lane was the topic of today, empowering the next generation. I thank God that God is helping me to create generations smarter than myself. I have, God has helped my wife and I to create the enabling environment for generations of young people in local community that should be smarter than me. Because God has helped us to provide the enabling environment for them to see it. If there's only regret I have is that I am unable to give free education to every Nigerian. I wish I have the means to do it. Uh, even if I have to sell everything I have, I would bet it's not possible for a person like me. So, and I thank God that what my brother here, Tony Lee, is just coming here for the first time. He said I didn't tell him. I don't tell anybody that I'm building a university because a person like me should not build a university. It's only rich men that should. But I have a God that's able to do all things. And so that God has built this place. And I want to especially thank the speaker of today. When the, when the Vice Chancellor told me he was inviting him, I said, you should tell him yourself. Because <laughs> I've not told him personally that I'm building a university. Um, if there's anybody I told that I was building a university, it was the governor of Kwara State, uh, Abraham Abrasak. When he announced that I would be the chancellor of Kwara State University, I, call, I called him and said, Please, don't you, but you know I'm, I'm building one. He said, God will help you. And he dropped his phone. So <laughs> that's how I accidentally become, uh, I became a double chancellor. <laughs> so I want to appreciate him for the honor that he has given me to lead a university as reputable as Kwara State University. And uh, with my team that are here, they are doing amazing things. So finally, I want to just sincerely thank Professor <laughs> Ali, S-A-N, the, you know, it's one of, when you are in the company of Professor Ali, I like to call you Professor here, when you are in the chamber, you, are beco you become your, the lawyer, because you are in the academic environment, that's why they rope you this way now. <laughs> so, it's such a, an embodiment of grace. A man, a non-assuming man, very energetic, very lovely, very happy. I mean, it makes you happy. It blesses your life and and it will it never it, it doesn't it doesn't underrate anybody. I want to thank you so much for what you are doing for humanity. Um, because at the end of the day, when our time here will end, the only thing God will ask you, what is the impact of your life on other people? 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much. For a very long time, I have heard that a tree does not make a forest. But born on November 26th in the town of Bukurese, record of local government, I know a renowned educationist, a philanthropist, and a community leader. I know a great man. Please join me. Is no any other person other than the founder and chancellor of Thomas Adeumi. Please let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him better. That is the brain box behind this great university. Thank you very much. And very fast, we're going to be moving to the citation of our erudite professor, and we're going to be inviting the vice chancellor of Thomas Adeumi University and person of Professor Francisca. Ola Dikbo. Please let's appreciate her. Thank you very much. Professor Alisa, I'm gonna ask you to stand and remain standing. This is the only time I can order you around. Distinguished guest, I am most privileged to read the citation of our history maker because uh, with his support today, we have achieved a major milestone in the strategic plan of our university. I am indeed, uh, we are indeed privileged. It's hard to get his, an abridged description of one of Africans finest, but we tried our best in the interest of time to get a one and a half page thing. I'm gonna be as fast as I can be. Yusuf Ali Esquire SAN had his elementary and Quranic education in 1960, after which he enrolled into secondary modern school. In 1978, he gained admission to the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, Ile Ife, and graduated with a Bachelor of Laws degree in the second class upper division. During his undergraduate studies, he was a winner of the prestigious Federal Merit Award and was also a university scholar. And that was one of the reasons that today we had to robe our own university scholars to join him on the procession so that they also look up to him that we have a scholar on our campus, a scholar from Ife for that matter. Upon graduation, he attended the Nigerian Law School where he also graduated with a second class upper division. About a decade after graduation, Malam Yusuf Ali went back to his alma mater for his master's degree program, which he completed with flying colors in 1991 when he bagged his master of law. He was appointed by the Chief Justice of Nigeria in 1989 as a notary public. He attained the highest professional honor at the Nigerian Bar in 1997 when he was conferred with the prestigious and honorable title of Senior Advocate of Nigeria, SAN. <laughs> Malam Yusuf Olaolu Ali, Professor of Practice, Federal University of Yekiti, has been in active legal practice for over three decades. He joined the law firm of Adeboyega Awomolo, I'm sorry, and co in 1983 and rose to become a partner before he left to found his own law firm in June 1994. He is the principal and founder of Yusuf O. Ali and Co, 
Gali chambers with offices at Ilori, Lagos, and Abuja. I told you, he deserves a loud, loud ovation for that. Professor Ali S.A.N. is a member of many professional bodies, such as the Nigeria Bar Association, International Bar Association, American Bar Association, Commonwealth Lawyers Association, among others. He has won and got conferred with many fellowships, such as he is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, Nigeria. He is a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation, Nigeria. He is a fellow of the Society for Peace Studies and Practice. He is a fellow of the Dispute Resolution Institute. He is a honorary fellow of the Nigerian Mining and Geosciences Society. <laughs> Professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali SN has served and is still serving on the boards of many companies and institutions and also holds many professional offices, which includes the sole judge of the Quara State Local Government Election Petition Tribunal, member Quara State Local Government Election Appeal Tribunal, life member Body of Benches, member National Executive Committee of the Nigerian Bar Association, member of the Nigeria Bar Association, Ilorin Council of Elders, and many others. Professor Ali S.A.N. is a patron and legal advisor to many professional and social cultural groups all over Nigeria. He is also an associate lecturer at the Faculty of Law, University of Ilorin, and currently appointed as a professor of, professor of practice by the Federal University of Yeikiti. <laughs> professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali has delivered more than 200 papers on diverse topics. And he has contributed more than 17 chapters to various legal books and has, to his credit, more than 40 published learned articles in learned journals in the fields of litigation, commercial law, jurisprudence, practice, and procedure, constitutional law in local and international law journals. He has been awarded more than 100 honors from within and outside of Nigeria. And he is listed in the American Biographical Institute's Who is Who, as well as in Nigeria's Who is Who. He's well traveled and has visited all the continents of the world for professional and educational purposes. He's a very passionate philanthropist, and with the Yusuf Ali Foundation, he has been so helpful to humanity. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to rise and welcome the first lecturer of the Distinguished Public Lecture, Famous Adewumi University, Okokwara State. Please sit down, please. Malam Yusuf Olalu Ali, Sam. Using the Olubu of Umara as my contact, I welcome all your royal highnesses. Kade Peluriki Bata Opelese Kirukore Dokini. That's one engineer who made me hard, so I've added that. I have a profession, so I have to pay homage to my colleagues. 
Alaja Abdul Kodri Oba Adebayo Ode Lodun Sun Advocate of Nigeria is there. And Somadu is my professional son. Kindi, Kola Woli, Eleja, Sun Advocate of Nigeria is there. A member, when the Vice Chancellor was saying he was he is their father, and he assisted in midwifing the faculty here. KK serves as a member of the Council of Legal Education in our country. Because others who want to have faculty of law so they don't come to you, maybe they thought you beat this place. You don't run into trouble. So they know the role you played, that it was intellectual. Magaji Musi, engineer. Because that's the name the proprietor likes to call you. I know I knew the way the two of you came together with the Olomo of Wamara, with Dr. Eduola and Rewaju. But I'm not going to, don't worry, I won't uh, reveal your secrets. I'm not going to do that. Okay. Don't let me start to say the way you started at DSS, Lauren. It's okay. Uh, just remember. Um, Professor. Victor Lanrewaju, I want to thank you for your very kind words. Uh, permit me to say we are colleagues in N NMGS, the German Geosciences Society. And people will be wondering, are you a scientist? I'm actually the only non-scientist in the council of that body in Nigeria. <laughs> and I'm also privileged to be a fellow of FN FNMG um, NMGS in our country. I want to thank you, sir. Incidentally, we have a common mentor, Professor Umar Rahman, first emeritus professor of geology in NIFE. It was only this morning he told me that Professor Rahman taught him in UI, also taught him in NIFE. The KU8 Plus. And because you have not changed your name yet, so I'm a lawyer, I want to be careful. I know you are nine now, until you change officially, then we know. KU eight plus one. I, I think under the leadership of uh, Professor Wahab Olashu Poebe Ole, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Vice Chancellor University of Ilori, I greet all of you. The advantage I have of all of you is that you are all my aburus. So it's, uh, I can take that for granted. I, I don't think anybody can describe the vice chancellor of this university better than the proprietor. May I adopt all you, the th good things you said about her uh, as mine? The first day she came to my office, I thought she came to accompany one of these other people here. Uh, because, I mean, looks could be very deceptive. Uh, I never knew that uh, she's my boss. No, I'm a new professor. You have been there for uh, as long as you can remember. So I pay homage to those who deserve that homage be paid to. My brother and friend, Professor Ms. Bao Akanji, Emeritus Vice Chancellor. <laughs> he was Vice Chancellor in Alikma when we started and went to Aya Pedestas when he became Vice Chancellor in Mina. And uh, your tenor till now is still ranked as probably the best since the foundation of that university. <laughs> I have one of my old boys there, Professor Rafiu Yusuf, uh, of Chemical Engineering Department, University of Illinois. And of course, the principal officers of the university are here. All of you I recognize you in very special ways. And other principal officers of other universities. And of course, the people from my office, we shut down our office to be here today. So I'm going to present a bill to Engineer Adiwumi uh, because um, we don't do it for nothing. So expect our bill, our invoice, for shutting down our Ilorian office today to be here. 
Now, what do you say about the founder of this university? From a distance, I've known him for more than 40 years. I've been issued from a distance. But later, we got close, bit close, bit close, bit close. At an I now found that we have common friends. KBSC is not our friend anymore, it's KBSC, so it can't be our own friend. KBSC is a different uh, cutting of fish. Engineer Tunle is still our friend, uh -huh. as long as he's not representing the EMEA here. If the Wola Rewaju, who incidentally couldn't come because they, were, they are celebrating his father's 99th post Umos birthday today, he will have been here. So I now found that we have common friends. And uh, such an assuming gentle, you can see his focus. If in 1983 he came back here, don't don't think the way this place was in 1983, oh, uh huh, because uh, you'll be thinking of something terrible. He came back and said, "Look, how do I lift this society that gave life to me after God?" Let me use education. And he set about it even while he was still in federal service, in the Federal Ministry of Water Resources. I want to thank you because, like we have rightly said, I, I tell people success can only be measured by the number of individuals God has used you to lift in life, not the number of cars, number of houses. You are upbuilding all those ones for other people. If God is kind with you, your children may inherit them. Otherwise, some other people's children will take them over. And that's what happens in most places. Other people take over the inheritance of other people. So I want to congratulate you that this is happening right in your lifetime. And that look at the number of people you have brought from all over the world. First into the secondary school, now into this place. And uh, when I was approached for this lecture, I considered so many things. And I said, look, this one deserves that I should make some sacrifice. That I'll, by the grace of God, God sparing our lives and in good death, I will be in Noko today. And God has made it to be possible. <clears throat> Engineer Adewume and your daughter. You deserve more than that. That's the least I can do to support you. And to let you know that I also want to contribute in my own little way, the mon this monograph was produced by my office. And we said we'll distribute to everybody that is present here today. So that uh, you have something to take home or take away, depending on your preference. Some people will prefer take away inside their small, small bags. But I'm sure they will still provide that as well. Uh, going forward. As we have been told, I have been commanded or commandeered, directed to deliver a short, short speech on decolonizing African education to empower the next generation. The good thing about being given a topic is that you have a ready-made alibi if you do not measure up to standard. Because if you have chosen the topic by yourself and you still don't measure up to standard, you have self marked yourself to failure. But when you are given a topic, it's a good something. You know, this topic was difficult. I couldn't just complain. That's why I couldn't do much. So it's a good alibi. So anything you hear here today, if it's not up to measure, blame the owners of Thomas Adeo University. They imposed this topic on me. So that's my alibi. But I do hope. I won't disappoint you much. This paper seeks to briefly define what decolonization means and delves into the multifaceted aspects of decolonizing African education with the aim to empower the next generation to own its future and produce indigenous educational products. It highlights the objectives of the research which includes exploring historical challenges in the current African educational system, the role of language, or languages if you would like, reclaiming indigenous knowledge, 
It's not as if we knew nothing before the Europeans came. We knew a lot of things. Building inclusive curricula, that is curricula that will be fit for purpose. And empowering teachers. And when I say teachers, I use it generically, including lecturers. With the necessary skills and knowledge to build an indigenous society that works for all. This work also examines theoretical frameworks for decolonizing, identifying challenges in the process, discussing strategies for decolonization, and empowering various stakeholders, such as teachers, students, and researchers. Additionally, because of the importance of stakeholders to the decolonization process, there is emphasis on the importance of creating inclusive and safe educational spaces, promoting student agency and voice, addressing gender disparities, and advocating for policy changes. The work concludes with a call to action for decolonizing African education and offers recommendations for future actions. I've calculated the time. I was given 45 minutes, but I won't waste your time. You have the text. I will try to do what my Oga has taught me when they were inducting me into the professorship. I will talk to the paper. But introduction and preamble, they are very necessary because they are the heart of the matter. If you can capture the preamble and the introduction, you have had the paper. Decolonization is thus a catch call term for concise attempts to redirect education away from colonial features to effect transformation and redress historical imbalances. It is the process of removing colonial elements known as decolonization. It is the advanced stage of African self-knowledge and self-determination. It's wanting to be politically self-determining. If you are still mentally colonized, you have independence without being independent. And we can see it amongst ourselves. When people decolonize education, they bring marginalized cultures and identities to the fore. Decolonization also acknowledges that Europe is a province and that all knowledge, all knowledge matter, not just Western knowledge. There is the need to establish the overarching context necessary for a comprehensive understanding of the state of African education, highlighting the utmost significance of decolonization within the educational sphere. By providing an outline of the purpose of this work and setting the stage for the subsequent chapters, it paves the way for an in-depth understanding of the subject matter through a retrospective examination of the historical aspects inherent in African education and illuminating and profoundly insightful investigation into the enduring influence of colonization on the continent comes to light. This journey into the past sheds invaluable light on the indelible impact of colonial education in Africa, enabling a more nuanced comprehension of its consequences. Moreover, this work meticulously examines the various decolonization strategies formulated for African education, notably post-colonial theory, Afrocentric education, and the crucial contributions of indigenous knowledge systems. By elucidating these strategies, this intellectual inquest seeks to empower readers with an extensive knowledge on knowledge base, enduring, ensuring that they have the resources to engage in meaningful discussions and take constructive action. To present a comprehensive analysis, this piece also delves into the potential challenges and obstacles faced in the path towards decolonizing the African education system. Among these orders, are uh, resistance from traditional educational institutions, financial def deficiencies, and the pervasive biases inherent in Eurocentric curricula. By acknowledging these barriers, it sets the stage for a proactive examination of possible solutions. Consequently, this opening segment not only identifies the existing challenges, but also offers strategies for decolonizing African education. To this end, it encapsulates crucial themes such as curriculum reform, the promotion of native languages, and the implementation of culturally relevant pedagogical methods. By engaging with these progressive ideas, it endeavors to contribute to the ongoing discourse surrounding educational decolonization. Finally, there is a dear need 
to discuss and emphasize the paramount importance of empowering African teachers and their continued professional development. There is equally the need to acknowledge and emphasize the importance and value of indigenous knowledge and embrace the integration of technology within the educational se sector to provide a comprehensive and well-rounded approach to facilitate educational growth and empowerment throughout Africa. Background of African education. The context of African education is essentially to comprehend the immediate need for its decolonization, which will address the systemic challenges it faces today. The tout of African education is plainly marked by the influence of East White colonial powers, leaving a heritage that advances Eurocentric biases and marginalizes the long-standing indigenous knowledge systems that form an integral part of Africa's cultural tapestry. Exploring deep into this complex topic and the exploration of historical facets that have shaped the current state of African education is merited. This journey involves a thorough investigation of the pre-colonial education systems of the continent and a critical appraisal of colonization's repercussions. Central to the decolonization effort is a comprehensive strategy for curriculum reform that will shift the focus from Eurocentric perspectives to elevating Africa's knowledge systems, history, and culture. Further, the empowerment of African teachers and students is a pivotal part of this transformation, which not only gives them essential resources and tools, but also recognizes and validates their experiences. Historical context of African education. Uh, in this part of the paper, I looked at how the system of education we practice was bequeathed to us by the colonial past and made the point that as to be expected education because they came here and that was why they promote the liberal arts more than any other man that they are. People hate competitions. People hate being competed against. And the example I normally give, don't, my, our mothers don't mind though, if you want people who hate competition more than any, they are these women. Uh -huh. So they, they, they don't like it, they don't even want to hear it. Uh -huh. So, and I also agree with you, we are on the same page. Um, but let me just tell you the only person who cannot be competed against is him. So, once you know that space, there could be competition, never mind. But you can continue to pray. Uh, importance of decolonization of African education. If we don't decolonize our educational system, the consequence or consequences are what we are facing today. And Kabezi, even at the meetings of these chiefs, they speak English. Clap for them. You can see the level of colonization. That speaks to it. That even at meetings of traditional institutions in our country, the only thing they can speak is English language. And it becomes a battle for those of them who cannot comprehend English properly or something, will have to get interpreters to interpret to the local language. When it should be the other way around, you now have a case of the tail wagging the dog. So if that's the only example I give to you, you know, it's so important that we have to decolonize our educational system. If our KBACs and ask their, 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 their eminences, their, uh, the eminent others, what is the English equivalent of KBAC? I can't find any. What's the English of Alaji Arinodum? What's the English equivalent of KBAC? Thank you, sir. Because he's a very grammatically correct person. That's why I asked him. Now, so things that are that indigenous to us, you can't find the equivalent language to translate, but we have no choice. Now, I read somewhere, I think it was um, Lord Denny, in the family story. He said the importance of 
local language is that every person thinks in their local language before you translate without knowing anything you are taught you first of all translate in your language in, within you and the, the ones you can't find the equivalent for it's difficult for you to understand or memorize but the ones that have really relation to what your language it's easier for you to maintain to retain in your memory and i think that's very true so if at that level so that's one of the reasons why we have to decolonize and and i'm happy there are so many elders there for those who are old enough in the first republic from 1960 to 66 january don't you look at the flowery language of campaigns during elections before elections both here in the south and everywhere there is nothing there to it today anywhere the politicians of those days let me recall what the late SLA Akitola was reputed to have said in offer here you know geographically this part of the world is part of the north after now now came to offer to campaign and i'll try to mimic him as much as i can everybody kept quiet yeah. you can't see anything like that anymore We've got into a stage in our politics that when people come, people come to campaign, they don't, they'll be speaking English. Ha! How do you communicate to the women in uh, Oja Tuntun? Oja Goro? Ha! Or you come and campaign here. The least you can do here is to speak Yoruba if you cannot speak Igbo now. Ha! So, it's very important you see this is you have lost and many of these children they are just wondering and you speak is, uh, is something else so it's necessary for us apart from the loss of our identities we all lost we lost our identities and you greet your friend the first thing he answers is english uh, you can understand hello on the phone. Many people don't know that that word hello was the name of the, uh, 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 of, uh, the daughter of the man who invented the telephone. Hello? So the, the moment the man went out and picked it in, the guy picked it up and said, Hello? Just to come whether it was the daughter. That's what we used to do. Hello? That's where the thing came about. It was the name of the daughter of the person who discovered the telephone. So, now, apart from that, it was not English language, but it turned to English eventually. Like, you know, English language is a potpourri of so many languages. They stole all sorts of languages to combine into English. Aha. So, you, you, you now see. Now, I'll go to pre colonial educational system in Africa. That's the kind of education that Europeans came and they condemned it. Things that were serving us well. Students will gather together in, 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 in a totally manner. They will be taught, they will be repeating it. You know, the human brain, such, and I'm happy there are doctors there, medical doctors there. It's an, it's, an, it's an interesting thing. I was reading something about this earphone, and there's a research now that has shown that the part of the brain that this with numbers in most people are is dead by about 80 percent the part of your brain that stores numbers you know why nobody stores number anymore i don't know what's your number you point you don't need to store it you don't need to cram it and as i'm here i know your number is just one or two persons offhand apart from my own number yeah that's why we are using landline I knew all the numbers of my friends and everybody by heart. The same thing with the, 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 the vehicle numbers. How many, many people don't even know their own, the numbers of their vehicles? So you now make efforts to remember things because you have suspended a part of our brain because we are using telephone. 
It's the same thing. The ability to have retentive memory is fading. Because of the system of cramming is different from understanding. In traditional methods of teaching in Africa, students will understand what was taught, not cram for exams. No. People will really understand what they were being taught. Because the way the students were even sitting was so congenial. You sit round. The teacher will be in the middle. There is no way you are going to forget that. But the teacher stands there. Many of the students at the back are doing some other things. Yeah, that's when you sit in a circle. You, the teacher moves round. Everybody sees. You, they know what the students are, are doing and so on and so forth. So these are part of the things we have lost that we thought was barbaric. The only organized one is when you sit like this, the teacher will be in front. We have even forgotten that psychologically, the students are thinking of you as an oppressor, as you stand there. Yeah, that's when you stay on the same level, you are more, better connected to the students. There are researches on these things that I'm talking to you about. Now, I went to the issue of introduction of uh, well, introduction of educational, Western educational models, and uh, you can see it from uh, I quoted uh, Michael Crowder, quoted all sorts of people here. Falola, uh, Falola is one of the most renowned historians that they have ever produced. He's, he teaches out now from the United States of America, and tomorrow those who have time come to Summit University is giving a lecture, their convocation lecture tomorrow morning. So, we have quoted all of them to buttress the point uh, about how we got enmeshed with... Um... Now, what is the legacy of colonial education in Africa? The aftermath of the colonial education era in Africa extends to, and brought in deep-rooted Eurocentric curriculum biases that, margin that marginalize African perspectives, if not totally obliterate creating an obstacle to efforts of decolonization. Colonial influence has persisted in traditional educational institutions, resistant to change, paucity of resources, and lack of investment in the construction initiatives. Overcoming these obstacle, obstacles require curriculum reformation, embracing of African perspectives, and the promotion of culturally relevant pedagogy. Empowerment of African teachers with the tools of, for professional development, acknowledgement of indigenous knowledge, and technological integration can greatly contribute to the decolonization initiative. The create, creation of inclusive, secure learning spaces, encouragement of dialogue and critical thinking, and redesigning physical environment also stand as necessary steps. Encouraging African Center research methodologies, fostering intellectual partnerships, implementing ethical consideration in research, and empowerment of African learner, learners by cultivating agency, addressing gender biases, and improving access to quality education all contribute to efforts aimed at decolonizing African education in Africa, advocacy for policy changes, fortification of African-led initiatives, and maintaining accountability and supervision constitute key aspects in the effort to decolonize the African educational landscape. I was aware at the time, I think it was in Ife, when they started this project of teaching mathematics in Yoruba, and so on and so forth. I wouldn't know where that effort, whether it had ended, or where it, whether it became moribund, these are the kind of initiatives we have to promote. For example, as part of the GNS in this, kind, in this type of university here, it's, it's not out of place to teach the history of the Gominans as part of general, general studies. Because the people are schooling here. They should be able to go outside there and say, look, we are a school, this is the name of the place, and this is the culture of the people. People will just come here and they will go away as if they just came to America. No. Engineer Jeremy, Vice Chancellor. You could see how people are struggling to call names of the local areas there. Uh, our doctor, because he only heard of a war before, he never knew that is a war. He just said, the only war of a war. You know? These are the kind of, if, if those who teach as children don't even get the names right, then what happens? So you must make that deliberate effort. Anybody who comes to 
Uku. Part of the DNA, general science, general studies, is, is allowed. Is that look, they should introduce elements of that. Including elements of the local language. Because that's the only way we'll be, people can go outside there. We cannot only stop at the culture of Cambridge, of Harvard, of MIT. No. They also created their own culture and they stayed back. Our own problem is that we abandon our things. I have somebody in my house who went to Cambridge. I went for his graduation. I was shocked. I went for his PhD graduation and I was shocked. Number one shock. The same all they've been using in, since 12... 29 when they established Cambridge was the same all they are they were still doing their convocation. The same all. I know when God blesses and the other women at this university, you may even say you don't want this or you may demolish it. So you both don't do that, oh they will preserve it. And that was part of the thing I learned. So when they started the convocation, do you know what they still do in Cambridge tomorrow? Convocation is conducted in Latin, but translated into English by somebody. Because that was where they started. And it's still the same thing. They put something like uh, a pillow. The vice chancellor will sit down. All students will come and kneel down and shake hands. Up to today. That was where I copied the idea when I became pro chancellor in Union Ocean. Number one, I never liked the idea that when you are doing convocation, you shut down a, a city. That was what was happening in the University of Illinois before. That's why I avoided going there on convocation day. That's the truth. I can't go somewhere and then I won't be able to live when I wanted to live. Ha. If you go to a convention in the University of Illinois in those days, you enter in the morning. On the 7 p.m., you are, you are marooned. Because everywhere is chapter, because the, 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 the 4,000 people will be doing convocation the same day. And you know us, everything is ceremony to Africans. Every graduate will bring 10, 10 people. So when I got to Union Ocean, I said, okay. There is, this is all they call you know, all. I asked the vice chancellor, how many people can this place take? They say 400. I said, oh, by the grace of God. But because the first convocation we had in 2016, they went and took uh, this thing you use for party. Uh, what was this thing? Maki. Ha. Everywhere was just festive. Drumming. And I just felt sorry for us. How much did you take Maki? They said 2 million. Money will be. Oh, 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 Hmm. So, and I said, VC, we are not going to do this next year by the grace of God. We have to change. He said, well, what do we do? I said, what we do is simple. You said you all will take 400 people. If it takes us two weeks to finish convocation, so be it. Nobody is chasing us. So, that was why the idea came in Union Show today. They want to do convocation. They take the number of colleges or whatever the hall will take with their guests. So, each, each student is entitled to a guest. So if there are 300, 200 students, there will be 200 guests, that's the end of the story. So if we have to break even a department to, 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 to do that, why not? Outside of Nigeria, for which all of you are very, very familiar, convocation is year, all year round. 12 people will come for their own convocation and go. So let's take the best of cultures and leave the rest. We should stop helping people. It's good if you can copy, it's good to copy. At least you can reject what is bad. But when you hate, you are doomed. You know where this cliche comes from? You know, we all know apes now. Good. There were so many apes in one group. And somebody said, How do I kill these things? Because he knew that once he shot a gun, the apes will not come back because they were wise enough. So, you know, there's this thing you're back called Sheke Sheke. This long thing that grows on trees, it looks like cutlasses uh -huh. when it becomes dry. So the man went, because, and they normally like that tree to come and play the apes. The man went there, he removed all the pods of uh, sheke sheke, now went and bought cutlasses, plenty, sharpened both ends, painted them black, and threw them on the floor or underneath the tree. Because they were apes, because they, were, they didn't have higher brains. The day they came to play, each person was just taking... What, normally what they would do with Sheke Sheke is that when they would start playing, they would, be, they would be hitting each other with Sheke Sheke. So the day they came, they didn't know it, they were cutlasses. They took cutlasses and they were cutting themselves. Blood was... But they didn't know. That's why you should not hate. 
Because they were helping themselves. They killed themselves. Let's copy, if you can, but don't, we should not hate. Now, we can also use Afrocentric education as a tool, pedagogy, for, so that, because once we set up something in opposition or in uh, uh, competition with the Eurocentric educational method, then at least we have something to choose from. And for now, we have no choice. So, in those days, those who went to school earlier than 1960, will tell you it was very fashionable in those days. Students will come to school in their, uh, in, uh, in their traditional dress. And school was going on. Of course, it's good to have uniform, at least because of uh, aberrant behaviors. But these things, we should not practice them to a level that it becomes a bit ridiculous. And the new culture. And I want to thank you, Engineer Dewumi. This is how school should be. But I want to ask you, I want to challenge you. The secondary schools that produce some, most, most of these children, how are they? I've been having running quarrel with a lot of governors over time. How do you build secondary school in these places and you make the window paco? Ah! You use wood to do window. One, no light. Oh. Once it started raining, you have to shut the window, no classes. Two, you are not teaching these children how to behave properly in the future. The excuse is that they will break the uh, uh, windows. I said, but look, you must find a way to teach them that they should not be vandals. You don't do that by now going back to the Stone Age. No. Because remember, this same set of students who leave this environment and now go to places where everywhere is a glass. So if they don't know, and that's why I want to commend the, 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 the authorities of Adesoye College. But well, that was where I had uh, had children that went at the time when they were in secondary school. You, they were louvers, which was the thing in those days. Not slide the windows like this. Louvers. Each student will be made to clean those louvers. And their system was simple. You, you, you will not give your children pocket money to hold. No. You pay to the school. So, if your child broke window, they deduct his account with the money for the replacement, and they will tell you that he broke two panes of, wind, of uh, glass, and this is the cost. They will remove it. Students they didn't allow children to bring books. The schools bought books. If you use the books, you tear the books, they, they deduct from your account that your child tore so 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 book to replace the book. So I'd been taking from that's how to train children. Like I always tell people, beheading is not the answer for headache. Oribibe, call Ogorifi for. You have to expose these children to the best of things while they were still young. That's the only way they will appreciate it when they grow old. But students who never went to school where there were glasses. So they are used to throwing things at the window. Nothing will happen. They will also come here and throw. So thank you very much. So please, let's uh, get it right. Now, we, I spoke about the indigenous knowledge system about uh, that we should try uh, to institute these indigenous systems so that you can use it as a counterpoise for a uh, Eurocentric educational system. And I'll go to challenges in decolonizing African education. I've uh, told you that there are a lot of issues, but one of it is resistance. Even from educational institutions, people do, the only thing, the most constant thing in life is change, but it's the only thing we already resist. We all know change is constant, but we all resist it. People don't like to leave their comfort zones. People are always, they feel good about things they are comfortable with. But you can't make progress, you can't continue to do the same thing in the same old method and you expect new results. You have to leave your comfort zone. 
if you want to make progress. That is the whole essence of science, technology, breakthrough in the world. People who left the traditional belief in a in system. When Galileo Galilei first of all said the world was spherical, not, not flat, as propounded by the Catholic Church, he was put to death. But society, history, science, technology, put, put them right. So people don't like change. The same thing with tradition, our, our education, is, they will resist all these things. And that is what is playing out in our universities. Because people don't like change. Note that I was given in 1978 in Ife. I'll come to class and be repeating the same note. Not only displaying my lack of uh, mental acuteness, though, because I mean it's mental indolence, but even apart from it, it's so comfort comfortable because I also went through the note before. So it's so easy. So we must fight this pro uh, prototype type of thinking. So the traditional educational institutions themselves would they are clogged to the issue of the colonization of our education. Lack of resources and funding. We are not even funding, even the one that we say is colonized, the way it should be funded. Now to now deploy resources to fund the decolonization itself is going to be a Kulian task. So it's very important that our governments and other stakeholders who have say and stake in our educational system must be prepared to deploy resources to develop the kind of uh, uh, institutions and avenues that will promote uh, 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 tra traditional educational system of Africans. So, and then those resources must be made available. Otherwise, we'll just be going around in circles. Now, addressing the Eurocentric curriculum biases. I briefly, after the intro, I now went to the curriculum reform and inclusion of African perspectives. For every time we develop new programs, let's look for the African uh, perspective that can be introduced. In our law, for example, and this is a challenge to professors of law here, including the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ilori, there is nothing wrong when anybody is writing any book on land law to put the shakole the way it is in Yoruba. Right, oh, those who are tenants on somebody's land will pay shakole. That's how to spread such things. Before you know it, when you will be saying it is shakole, but at least something is there for them. It will be new learning for a lot of people. Even uh, people like Professor Kajiwa in chemistry, if any, put it as if any in your research. Why must you look for, why must Papa be Karika Papaya? Yeah, as if we need pay. No, it's true. Why must it be Karika Papaya? Unfortunately, most of those things were taught in, in, in the biology in those days, I, in the cram all those things. I've forgotten most of it. Though. It's easy to forget them. The only thing I remember is the Karika Papaya. So, it's very bad. why don't we call it the Beppe and then you put Karika Papaya in parentheses? So that you are, indigenize, you are indigenizing the knowledge. And I think it's quite, and there's no area of knowledge you don't have that, that you can, uh, uh, for example, panegyrics, Oriki. If you are a Yoruba scholar, put, first of all, put the Yoruba Oriki properly as it is. Huh? Put it there. And then let me ask you, what is katakiti? You are spreading knowledge. Hmm? Look at languages in education. It's very important. I've mentioned, I made the point. There's no actual reason why you can't use Yoruba to teach chemistry or physics. There's no actual reason. That is why we, you see, it's just because we don't, we don't broaden our outlook. Why is it that Chinese, anywhere they go, they always make first class? 99 percent of Chinese who study in Europe or US. Even in mathematics, they will score 100%. Because from their homes, they were taught all these things 
in, in, in their language. So they usually will do very well. They are probably the brightest human beings or not, the Chinese, when it comes to classroom education. No. Very bright. It's because uh, they, 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 they teach their children in Mandarin. I think that's the local language, Mandarin. So they, they, everybody is taught at that level until you get to the university. Hey, so let's also do something to do that with ourselves. Let's teach our children. In, and uh, those of us that are the elite, we are part of the problem. In how many of the homes do people speak Yoruba? You know, I tell people, Yoruba is the only dying language in Nigeria. It's a dying language, Yoruba. It's dying. The average Igbo child will speak Igbo first, before English. The average Hausafulani person will speak. That's why when you employ them, even as security, they speak Hausa to you. You employ them as security in Omarao, not in Kotangorao. They will be speaking the language to you. And Yoruba people think it's a shame to speak their own language to other people. Uh, Elijah Lodo was there. In those days when we used to go to Kaduna to do cases in uh, the Court of Appeal, before Court of Appeal came to Ilori, we would go to the market. I mean, I mean, I said, hello, Lenta. And they buy Yoruba. I mean, they buy Ausa. Ah, we are in the same country. But if you don't understand my own, why must I understand your own? Which law says so? Ah. Ah. I said, hello, Lenta. It looks like a joke, but you see, Language imperialism is a problem. Any form of imperialism is dangerous. Any form of imperialism. And I'm happy. Our brothers from the forces are here and the police. The, the lingua franca in the army, police, immigration, is also. It's good, but we should also promote the other languages because we have to live together. very important and that's part of the, the, the thing so let's all all of us then we have to promote culturally relevant pedagogy method of teaching how do you transmit knowledge to people in a way that it will sit with them they will understand what you are talking about and they will be able to retain most not all of what you have uh, uh, taught them now, empowering African teachers are more, more recruitment through welfare. As young as I am, and I'm serious about that, that I up, don't look at me like that, over. When I say I'm young, what's your problem? <laughs> am I not young? Now, growing up, to many of us who started school in the 60s and so on and so forth, the best profession we were looking up was to teach, to be, to be teachers. Everybody wanted to because it was so prestigious. So prestigious to be a teacher. Because they were the best in the communities. But today, if you are praying for your children, may God make you to be teachers, they won't answer. Some, they will not answer you. Even all these scholars. You say they should be teachers. They say if, they, if to be scholar is to be teacher. I won't be scholar again. <laughs> now, you see, if you don't take care of our teachers at all levels, I've always formed the impression, and I'm saying this for the often time, I believe that teachers, lecturers, are not properly paid in this country. No. How can a professor go home today with 500,000 naira? I think we are jokers. We are jokers. We are as a fresh graduate will go and join one of these federal government parastatals, especially of NNPC extraction. He has more than that. So we have to do something. Now, if professors take 500,000, don't talk about headmaster of primary schools. So we must do something about this. Even 
to even promote uh, the Eurocentric education. You have to do something about it. It's so ridiculous. Somebody who's at the head of his profession, of his career, professor, like the Klichy of Asu, my take, my take home pay cannot take me home. That was your Klichy years ago. Uh, <laughs> so, so let's try and improve the lot of our teachers. Maybe that would discourage the new and unfortunate development, especially in our tertiary institution, public tertiary institutions. Your lecturers will now be asking for tires for their vehicles from students and be asking for fuel subsidy from the students. All these things are symptomatic of inadequacies. Of course, we have people who are incorrigible, who are normal crooks, who just strayed. They strayed into the classroom as teachers. But majority are men and women who want to give their best to the generations that are coming behind. The society must also be able to give them part of what is best that the society can afford. <laughs> Professional de development for teachers is all the same part of the same thing. Can you imagine when we were in primary school, we, there were no subject matter, um, subject teachers. It was one teacher that would teach the whole class, nature studies, uh, hygiene, arithmetic, and uh, civics. One teacher. The only subject that will have another teacher is either CRK or IRK. Now today we now have graduates teaching air science, teaching arithmetic. Have we improved? Most of the people who sit in front here, most, I'm not saying all of I've seen some people. <laughs> most went to public primary schools. And I can say this as a fact that most of us, when we left primary school in the middle 60s, before 1970, we could read newspapers. Primary six or primary eight. Now, call a graduate or come and read the story in a newspaper here. You will marvel. So, that's why we have to retrain our teachers now more than ever before. But it takes resources to do that. I go to what I call recognition and valorization of indigenous knowledge. It's a system of what I've been speaking about. Uh, then, we have to support our teachers to integrate technology into our educational system. You don't need to be, to have a BSc or be engine in computer science to be able to move today in the world. But people only know, people can only disseminate what they know. A teacher who has never interacted with a laptop before. Now we talk of uh, no, no desktop, no laptop, no internet, and they are talking of internet of things. How will you even understand what you are talking about? In today's world, if, if you are reading Portuguese and you are, you are not uh, 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 literate uh, with IT, you are, you, are not likely to make much, you are not likely to make much progress. Not even today when KBCs are now looking at the minutes of their meeting on iPad. So you must, you must also move with the time. So we must encourage our teachers and provide the environment for them to integrate technology into whatever they do so that um, we'll make more progress. And it's not it's nothing big old. Uh, sorry, who can remind me what they, we call this space they created in primary and secondary school in those days where you study wind, uh, God bless you, geographical garden. You had this it anywhere anymore. And then what's the name of engineer? Do I this thing they put with they put uh, arrow that will be rotating to show you whether it's northwest? Wind, wind, thank you. Now, all these things 
Nobody remembers them. Oh. And in each class in those days, there is a nature study cutting, a nature study uh, uh, corner. Hygiene and nature study corner in all the classrooms. And they will put water inside the bowl. Whenever you left the classroom, when you are coming, you must wash your hand. There was no COVID then, no. So don't start to think it was because of COVID. No. It was just to teach people hygiene, to teach them neatness. And uh, so many things had gone wrong. Every Monday, when you resumed in school, in those days, in primary school, you line up at 8 o'clock in the morning. They check your nails. Then you, your teeth. And then you remove your shirt somewhere. They want to see whether you have a under her here. Yeah. Maybe you didn't pass. All those things were there. But today, hey. in fact, those who don't have long nails, you go and buy and look like witches like this. They go around. You see them. Oh, sorry, I forgot the women are here. The one they do now, which is very interesting. You see, that's why most women, I can't recognize them after any event. Because they look so different at uh, functions. When they now remove all those, especially this thing they put in here, they look like oh, we will. Oh. You know oh, we will. Oh. Ah, yeah, ah. So, once they remove that, you can't even know it's the same person. You know, the world has gone full cycle. I was uh, watching football yesterday when I got home, when I was taking my dinner. And I saw a lot of the boys, they, their hairstyle is like that of uh, the vice chancellor. Adi Male. I said, well, Adeo. <laughs> so for those of us who are parents, once your child comes home as a boy and is using your ring, call him into the room. Are you going to remove this or will cut your hair? I know it's either of two things. Then there should be, we should foster dialogue and critical thinking in classrooms. The days of just coming to the classroom to dictate notes is gone. Nobody does that. And I'm happy to announce to you, I'm, I'm developing some things that I will take to all year. I'm not going to be a traditional lecturer like that. No. For critical thinking to develop, the students must do the job themselves. This era, what, we, what the, the somebody called uh, nanny mentality must stop. Nanny. You know nanny mentality? A baby relies on the nanny for everything. When it's time for food, only thing he does is just open his mouth. They will put in spoon there. No. We should allow these children to think for themselves. We should, allow, we should challenge them. They have better exposure than us when we were their ages. I've told some professors somewhere in one university, I said, your days of, uh, 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 of uh, uh, what, how did I call it? I said, uh, I said, intellectual terrorism is over. I said, because as we are talking in the class, these children with their phone, they, are, they already Google what you are saying. I said, ah, Professor Kenny is copying this work. You are just wasting your time. So, in order to beat these children, you must be ahead of them. And that's part of the leadership we have, problem we have in our country. Most, most of the led are more knowledgeable than the leaders. We are, leadership is about having more knowledge than the people that you are leading. And if you don't have the knowledge personally, you should surround yourself with people who can share the knowledge. And they make you to be, they, you look like, uh, it's very essential for us to... Critical thinking is very important. Assessment and evaluation. We must do that all the time. We must now shift from the way we do assessment. Somebody has said it before, and I agree. Examination is, may not be the true test of a student's ability. It may not be. There are people who made third class and became world beaters at places of work than those who made second class upper or first class. Certificate is good, at least, at least evidence that you attended. It's very important, though. I'm not saying certificate is not good. No. 
And I'm not saying you should not pass well. If you make a first class, the society will celebrate you. And if you make a first class on your own, like one professor told me in, in England, he said, you can make a second class upper by luck, but you can't make a first class by luck. Is that, he says, if you make a first class, it means you are, you are here properly. That's in systems, we are systems, we are there are integrity in the system. Oh. Uh -huh, because we must also put a caveat. Now, you see clearly that we must all try at all times to put something there that will serve all of us. Our assessment methods. We should not, I don't think ordinarily, all these exams should carry more than 40% in the system. No, there are other parameters that should be used. Even the dressing of students when they come to classes could be five marks. They won't know. So those who come with uh, this, your trouser that uh, they always, uh, the first time I saw the trouser, the jeans that they caught, I said, you fell down somewhere. Honestly, I didn't know it was a style. I said, did you, f you, f you fell down somewhere? That your trouser, I said, no, it's style. When you move I saw two with the water, so we with the lay. Because we didn't know what's at all, yeah. I do it, call. <laughs> you know, unfortunately for us, we think we are civilizing, whereas we are going back to where we started from. The hallmark of civilization when man left the cave was wearing of dresses that cover the body. Is that not? For men and women. But we are going back to where we started now. The less dress you put on, the more fashionable you are. Where our phobia started is where people are going back to, and they think it's a uh, progress. No. Like a late MK Wabella said, only Abimani Le Pano, Alosso Ruko, and Ile Coco, see Olan Rewadu Neni, Abolan Reni. For those who don't understand, go ask for translator. I'm not going to translate them. Because this is Yoruba now. So we also have to redesign the physical learning environment. I mentioned this in passing. Look, given our environment, given the humidity, given everything, you have tried with this all, but you have not tried enough. The windows should come from up to down like that without any something there. That's the only way, because if there is no light, no nothing, you open the windows, everywhere will be okay. And then the lighting system will be here, plenty. So you don't even need to waste your money on solar. Now to be able to put this all in proper perspective, you need more of this uh, thing, like almost 20. Why are you using resources like that? When you can do the windows, they call them... Uh, them, uh, them uh, France window, uh, French windows. Uh -huh. This one, it should just come like that. Join this one. This one should join this one here. And you can open. And we'll be okay. So we have to learn how to redesign, given our environment and our resources. Why must we waste all this money on all these farms? If this place is opening up and then wind can come in, uh, 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 whatever. So it will be okay. So that goes down the line. Look at our primary schools. Most and I'm happy. You said your primary school disappeared. Many primary schools are disappearing. Even secondary schools. If not for old students now, of secondary schools in many places. I mean, I went to Badabos High School in Ibadan. I knew that the school today would have gone on that totally if not for the old students. If not for the old students, and that's also a challenge to all of us. Let's contribute to all those schools. It's, it's necessary. At least the memory that you can take your children or your grandchildren at this the secondary school I attended. But it will be very sad. You take your grandchildren and say, oh, my school I attended used to be here. Then you'll be asking, what happened, Grandpa, what happened to your school? Then you have the difficulty of having to explain. Instead of going through that trouble, why don't you join others and put your school in good perspective? So I think it's quite necessary. Now, decolonizing educational research. How do you do that? I've mentioned it here. But let's 
especially interdisciplinary uh, 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 research, is the vogue today. You are a lawyer, you can join Professor Musba Akanji to do a research on the legal effect of toxic coming out of industries in Ilori. Especially in this age of climate change. Medical doctors can join him, others can join him, okay, what, what is the problem, uh, or what is the right of owner of a building concerning influence from X? So these are the kind of things we should do and collaborate so that we'll come out with better research results that can stand the test of time. We should, and then we should also de-emphasize this idea, you publish or perish. What you publish is the important thing, not the quantity. If you publish 100 articles, out of those 100, how many have impact on even your area of study? At, at, apart from just reading it for promotion purposes. It's very important. But we can't get to all those ones except we are ready to collaborate on researches and uh, do cut-edge researches. Uh, I have somebody who read elect elect in Manchester University. I went visiting and I got to the faculty building and I saw in one an area as big as the front of this place, the whole of this place, they built it up, and there was a 3 kVA transmitter with power brought from outside into the place. And I asked, why this? He said, look, they use it for research. You know all those who study in that kind of environment, they will understand what you call power. Unlike those, many people who do electric electric, you may not even know there is a tight 3 kVA, there is a level kVA. You know, these are very important things that we should. Then we should also promote African-centered research methodologies. I've mentioned that. Then we should do collaborative research across Africa. I also made the point that um, we should have ethical considerations in all our researches. I was going to ask, ask actually, this... Uh, what is the name of this thing they were doing at the time? They said they want to make human beings now. Not AI. Uh, before AI now, this one, they did they, a pig. Cloning. It has come to bad end. You see, my argument, I'm not a scientist. They say a sheep. They took a part of a sheep. You don't need the insemination. And then it will become another thing. Uh, I said, you are joking. Only God can create. You know why? It's like saying, oh, I've made a photocopy of this your lecture. If there is no lecture, where will you make a photocopy? You are taking part of something that exists already. You didn't create that thing. And you are saying you have created something. You have created nothing, no. You start your own the way God did his own, from nothing. Say, oh, abracadabra, hey, come, this is it. I, I brought this boy. Uh -huh. I will say you have done something. But you are cloning. You, you, you have a primary source. What you are doing is secondary. So there's nothing fantastic there for me. It's just like photocopying. You do a page of a photocopy, and you say uh, you have created the paper. No. If there was no original document, you won't have any to photocopy. So it's the same thing. So let's, that kind of knowledge, you see, it came to bad end because it was not brought to promote the best in the society. So that is the ethical issue. Because they never thought about ethics. He died prematurely. And then other problems started. That, ah, okay, when you now create this thing, who will take ownership? And that takes me to AI. Somebody mentioned AI, artificial intelligence. If we are not careful, hmm, we will all be very sorry. Oh. Because people will create artificial intelligence they will create AI that will go and cause war. Unintended wars. Look at what drones are doing. They could be good to, to go, and that is an element of AI. But you see the, the effort it could do. The disaster we had in Kaduna a few days ago, 
will not happen with a human managed uh, fighter jet. It's not likely. The way it was drawn, it just all figures and it has been configured that when you see so many people, there must be these people. Oh! But if it was human element, it would look, ah, no, I could see people dancing. Hey, I will not recognize dancing, no. Once you program it out, when you see people in the hall, they are like this, just throw a bomb. You won't know we are doing lecture. You just throw a bomb here. Bam. But if it's human, somebody, an Air Force officer, flying a bomber, he will take another, he will do the reconnaissance, he will do, he will do tour. Ah, I think I could see, even our own men, they are here. Oh. Ah, I could see, ah, no, I don't think what else. So they will now send ground crew to go and check. At least do reconnaissance and say, oh, no, you know, don't go away. But the uh, drone, uh, we are all gunners. <laughs> so AI has, has a lot of potentials for good, but anytime we want to deploy these technologies, let's be very careful, though, so that we are not developing a Frankenstein that will come. I don't have problems that uh, many jobs will be lost. Uh, this will be lost. Most people are actually I do. Especially in government spaces. You get to a ministry. They say they are around. Some people are there. And what are we doing there? Chasing files. When two people will do this effectively and go away. So, I think quite honestly that we should. Then we should empower our students. We should allow these children to have the culture of critical thinking. None of us, I always tell people, I say it's not good to be arrogant. But if you must be arrogant, never be arrogant about knowledge. Never. It's not good to be arrogant too. But if you must be arrogant, never about knowledge. Because the height, the zenith of your knowledge is the stupidity of so many other people. Like the boy, ah, man, he's gone. That one, Lubo, man, he's going to buy it. Oh, they're going to talk. It depends on the standards. So, let these children, let them develop their thinking faculties of, to challenge so many assumptions and theories. And I'm appealing to our colleagues who are teachers. Don't be unnecessarily sensitive. Huh? And I'm talking to 200 level students, and he was challenging me. We are talking about knowledge. Ah. Like I told you, many of these uh, children, they have access to so many other things that you, you may not even advert your mind to. The topic you are treating, maybe they have even Googled and uh, seen a lot of things. So, it's very important. Let, let's encourage them. Let them challenge us. But show that you are the master by providing answers that is ahead of what they are saying. You, we, but we cannot continue to keep our ignorance by saying, ah, what do you mean? I've been teaching this thing for 50 years. You could be saying rubbish for the last 50 years. Who cares? So if people now want you to say sense, please listen. It's very important. We should cultivate student agency in education. We should know. It does who know the history of universities. And that's why I want to commend the University of Illinois and other universities that are doing it. When they started Cambridge, Harvard, is the students that will recruit the lecturers. That was how university started. Students recruited their own teachers. That was the, why the idea came of students assessing lecturers. People now think it's, uh, it's an aberration. No! In any event, if you assess these students, what's your own problem in, for them to assess you too? What's the problem? If you know you are doing well, why are you afraid? So we should encourage our universities. There should be this feedback. Let the students also look like lecturer A, lecturer B. Uh, what is the impact they are giving in class? You'll be surprised. Some of them will come, we, we discovered that when Prof, the lecture he was given to us was a lecture that his own lecturer gave to him in 1952. So, we have, you'll be surprised. So, we should also allow these students. Now, our educational policies, 
we should decolonize our educational policies. There should be policy change. I can't remember the number of the system of education we are practicing there. Six three three four. Is, what do you call this one now? This second school thing. Six three. No. Three three. Anyway, all those things. Look. You talk to younger people today. You say, ah, when I was in class five, you say, you mean GS3, GS2, and SS2? I said, no, there was no SS in our own time now. It's straight, class one to five. These children don't understand that one. So we have done enough of tinkering with the educational system that by now we should settle at some things that people can understand. So we should come up with policies that can stand the test of time. Where we copy these things from, some of them have been practicing the same type of education for the last 300 years. And it has paid off for them. Let's develop something that can work for us, given our circumstances, given our situation, given whom we are, given the paucity of resources. Then we should strengthen our institutions. It's not only in terms of infrastructure, even in terms of governance. I kept on wondering, I was uh, chairman of the Committee of Pro Chancellors of State Universities for about two and a half years, or two years, nine months. And when we gathered at our meetings, the kind of type of complaints I had from many pro chancellors, I'd well be wondering, why did you get to this path? One, Many managers of our educational institutions, including the councils, don't even know their obligations or their rights. They don't. That's why you have of crisis between vice chancellors and pro chancellors. What should cause that one? Under the status of the universities, the, the, the Senate is totally responsible for anything that has to do with academics. The only thing that concerns council is when somebody is becoming a professor, you bring the name to the council for where <laughs> how many professors are in the council? Many people didn't even go beyond secondary school. <laughs> but at least to glorify all of us. But we should know our limitations. Convocation. Council has very little role to play. They invite the chairman of council to come and deliver a lecture on the day. Simple. They give a speech. It belongs to the, to the, to the, the administration, the, 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 the VC and his people. Let them go. And then, why are you looking for additional wala? If you are pro chancellor, why are you, what are you looking for? Uh, uh, why are you doing your convocation? It's for them. The, once you set your, the council should set the founder's day. This period, though, is our founder's day. We'll be having convocation this time, every time. Simple. That's the policy. How they achieve it is their problem. So when I hear stories at Copson, the vice chancellor, they are fighting. And pro chancellor is fighting. I say, ah, number one, as pro chancellor, you have no permanent seat in anywhere in the university. No. They will allocate an office for you because they did you come for your meeting so that you can assemble with your members. And after the meeting, you go back to your houses. It's as simple. I remember in 2017, I, I was barely a year old as a pro chancellor. I was going somewhere to go and deliver a lecture. And incidentally, the vice chancellor then called me. I said, ah, oh, I will be going to Ife to deliver a lecture. I said, say my your door. Go nikile nishi. Say my your door. No show. Say your door. Nikile nishi. Ah, okay, can wuwa. Let me just be ulube wu. But the money she. But no. And throughout my tenure of several years in that university, I will never go to that university except we have something doing in the university. You can't see me there. I'm out of. God has been very kind. I'm busy on my own right. Why should I be doing uh, Tojubo? And to have peace of mind, either as vice chancellor or pro chancellor, don't, don't, be, don't allow people to be bone for you. You won't have peace of mind. Again, I give personal example. When I got to that place in 2016, I called all the stakeholders. I said, Amy, I don't listen to money. If you want to write a petition, please, by all means, it's your right. But if you write an anonymous, anonymous petition, I will not dignify you by reading it. I'll just shed, shed it. I won't read. 
If you are not man or woman enough to put your name to a petition, why should you be wasting my own time? And for the seven years, nobody wrote any anonymous petition. None. And which is quite unusual in a state university. Nobody. Because I made it clear. And I told them, don't come to me in the morning. Eh? We saw the vice chancellor. He was riding one vehicle like this. Eh? Should he be riding human beings? What was my own problem with that one? He can do anything he likes. If he works within the law, fine. If he goes outside of the law, the court law will catch up with him. So we, we must. I'm talking to the issue of. Um, we should just ensure that the governance system in our universities, in all the spaces actually, we should follow the rules and the laws to the letter. And can we give the founder of the university a round of applause? He left the VC and our people to do their work. The first interaction I had with him about this lecture was today. He didn't go behind them to go and say, uh, uh, did they get to you? It has their own work. Why? The man is busy. That's how it should be. Accountability and monitoring progress. Even when people are doing well, they need to be encouraged by knowing that some people are watching. It's very necessary. Uh, I'm not advocating that there is just you take our agenda, you say, ah, there was, mm, 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 mm. we should be responsible. But let's just know. And now quickly go to my conclusion. In conclusion or in concluding, decolonizing African education is crucial for empowering the next generation. Through this process, we can address the historical legacy of colonialism and promote an education system that is inclusive, culturally relevant, and empowering for African students. However, there are several challenges that need to be overcome, including resistance from traditional educational institutions, lack of resources, and biases in the curriculum. To successfully decolonize African education, strategies such as curriculum reform, the inclusion of African perspectives, and the promotion of culturally relevant pedagogy need to be implemented. Additionally, it is important to empower African teachers through professional development and recognition of indigenous knowledge and to create inclusive and safe educational spaces. Collaboration with African scholars in research and, ad and the adoption of African-centered and safe and research methodologies are also crucial. Ultimately, decolonizing education policies and ensuring accountability and monitoring of progress are necessary for long-term change. By taking these actions, we can create an education system that is truly empowering and transformative for African students. Some of the numerous challenges facing decolonization efforts as discussed above are resistance from traditional educational institutions, lack of resources and funding, and biases in the curriculum. This intellectual piece also contains strategies to address these challenges, including curriculum reform, inclusion of African perspectives, promotion of local languages, and culturally relevant pedagogy. Emphasis was also placed on the importance of empowering African teachers through professional development, recognition of indigenous knowledge, and support in integrating technology. Additionally, it explores the need to decolonize educational spaces by, by redesigning physical environments, creating inclusive and safe spaces, and fostering dialogue and critical thinking. The lecture also touches upon the significance of decolonizing educational research through promotion of African-centered methodologies, collaborative partnerships with African scholars, and ethical considerations. Lastly, it mentions the empowerment of African students by cultivating agency and voice, addressing gender disparities, and enhancing access to quality education for all. Recommendations one, implementing curricular revisions that reflect African viewpoints empowering indigenous languages in education and fostering culturally relevant pedagogy are among the recommendations for future measures in decolonizing African education. Two, decolonization professional development for teachers is critical as is recognizing and valuing indigenous knowledge. Furthermore, assisting teachers in incorporating technology into school is critical for modernizing the learning process. Three, Decolonizing educational spaces requires redesigning physical learning environments, establishing inclusive and secure spaces for marginalized groups, and fostering conservation and critical thinking in classrooms. Lest I forget. Now, we are talking about uh, disability and things.
please, you have to mount something here for people who use uh, wheelchairs so that they can access this hall if they are in this school. Uh, luckily, before I left the Union, we started it. We don't, when we plan our own things, we don't look at, at other people. We only look at able-bodied people as if we are all able-bodied and that be, having disability is a crime. In future design, ensure that you create spaces that people who use wheelchair will be able to access here freely and be able to sit down too and listen to whatever we are doing. That is the only way to address that area. Four, promoting African-centered research methodology, forming collaborative research relationships with African scholars, and addressing ethical concerns in African educational research are all critical steps towards decolonizing educational research. Four, five, promoting student agency and voice, eliminating gender inequities, and expanding access to high-quality education for everyone are all priorities. Six, also of importance is the decolonization of African educational assessment and evaluation. Seven, it's also very important to, address, to stress the need to financially support research and policies geared towards decolonizing and the empowerment of both teachers and students who are critical stakeholders in the education sector. A call for action. It, one, it requires addressing the resistance from traditional educational institutions, which are often hesitant to embrace change. There is a pressing need for adequate resources and funding. Three, another is the need to address the biases inherent in Eurocentric curriculum, ensuring that African perspectives are included in educational materials. D, it is essential to empower, empower African teachers through professional development. Then we have to design our physical environment. We should empower our students there should be edu ethical education and the policies must be decolonized. Importantly, there is a need to decolonize our brains, thoughts, way of actions, outlook, and work ethic. Once we achieve this, decolonizing our education will be an easy task. Because if our brain remains the same as the way it is, we are just wasting our time. What is left is to thank the proprietor, the pro chancellor, the vice chancellor, and the university community for the invitation of this to this lecture and the topic assigned to me. Finally, I thank you all. I hope you have not been too bored. Thank you and God bless. I want to believe that we can appreciate Professor better. I want to believe that we can do better. Yes, let's appreciate Professor. Let's appreciate him. He has delivered a very wonderful lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting lecture. We want to appreciate Professor for the wonderful time. Thank you for capturing all of our attention and thank you for educating us on how to be decolonized. I want to, in line with that, of being decolonized, uh, invite our founder, but now I am not going to only uh, invite him as the founder, but I'm going to invite him as the chief, the As Asiwaju of Okoland. That is Engineer Dr. J.B.O. Adeumi. Please, you are welcome to the podium to appreciate the guest lecturer for that wonderful lecture. Please, let's appreciate him as he comes forward. Thank you very much. Okay, we are also using the medium to invite our guest lecturer to receive a token of our appreciation on behalf of Tomosa Adewumi University as the Asiwaju of Oko presents the plaque. Thank you.
every, every one of us has something to take away from taking into consideration. We are going to implement your, your recommendation, and I can say it, I have the chairman of council remain the same after this. So we thank you so much for teaching us, for helping us. One good thing about private university is that we, it's very easy to take decisions. There is nobody that we, that's higher than where I'm standing now. <laughs> so on behalf of every one of us and this eminent uh, group, we are so happy that you are our first lecturer. You have set the pace for future to come. And we, we are not going to let you down. So we thank you so much, and, all, and we thank all members of your office. They closed down. Uh, I know some people will be knocking your door there. <laughs> well, they know we can't pay an SAN. We have politicians out there that will pay your bills. <laughs> so we thank you so much, and we pray that God will bless you. On behalf of every one of us, we give you this award that will be placed in your office. I'm sure when I come around, I will look at it so that um, you are part of us from now. Yes. And, uh, and I know God will take you higher in Jesus' name. Amen. You have started this work, but we, are, we, like, we want to learn from you. Thank you, Thank you very much. All right, thank you. While stay standing, please do not go yet, sir. While stay standing, may I humbly request the Vice Chancellor of Thomas Adeumi University to come forward. So Yusuf Ali, when we first approached you to give this lecture, I know everyone will see you here today. They may not understand the sacrifice you had to make. I remember there in your office, you had to bring out your schedule, and we started looking through to find a suitable date. At some point, I was willing to concede that, okay, maybe we we'll find some times next year. Or you said, ah, Sheba, it's okay, we're doing Lefeshe. And I remember you took your pen and had to cross out some, I'm sure, very important schedule for today. So we're going to be training with you. A larger copy of this is going to be standing here in this university to commemorate the achievement of this very important milestone in our strategic plan. You are the first public lecturer here, and it is not something we take for granted. Thank you so much. We want to present this to you, and uh, a twin, a bigger twin of this, is going to be strategically here in this university as a sort of remembrance for this very important day and this landmark achievement and milestone. Thank you so much, sir. Please celebrate our distinguished guest lecturer once again. Please, we would like to recognize uh, this set of wonderful people, Obade Lodon, SAN. We welcome you, sir. KK Eleja. S-A-N, we welcome you, sir. <laughs> Professor Har-O Yusuf, you are welcome, sir. 
Professor M. Akonji. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Professor Niman Abdurrahim, Dean, Faculty of Law, University of Florida. You're welcome. <laughs> Dr. K.W. Saleh, Registrar, Quara State University. You are welcome, sir. You are welcome, ma'am. The Chief Magistrate at Denier, you are welcome. <laughs> Barrister Moshuru Afanla, Registrar, University of Florida, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> the entire staff and member of Yusuf Ali and Co. Galip Chamba, you are all welcome. We celebrate you. <laughs> Professor Rashid Jimon, you are welcome. <laughs> Provost, College of Earth Sciences, University of Illinois, Professor B.S. Alabi, you are welcome, sir. The Assistant Commissioner of Pro, uh, Police, ACP Adekunle Omwaran, Area Commander, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> the Unit Commander, Omwaran Unit, Afolabi Kayode David, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> we celebrate you, sir. <laughs> Professor Jones Adeniyi, you are welcome. Professor Ibiemi, Group and Planning and Implementation of the TA, you are welcome, sir. Then Dr. Azan Kalejaye, University of Florida, you are welcome. Okay, I think we are done. Okay, yes. Dr. Mrs. Miriam Bayero, Bayero Jimo. Acting Dean, Faculty of Law at Lickman University. You are welcome, ma'am. Okay. Professor A. A. Fawale, member. Okay, yes. Member Governing Council, University of Florida, you are welcome, sir. <laughs> Professor S.F. Ambali, DVC Management Sciences, no, Management Services, <laughs> University of Florida, you are welcome. <laughs> Dr. Katie Omokupa. University Liberia, University of Illinois. Welcome, you're welcome. So much. Yes, sir. You're welcome, sir. Mr. Oba Abdubaki, Atsin Bossa, University of Illinois. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Professor S.F. Ambali. Ah. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> okay. Professor Ola Dimeji, you are welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to believe that we have all been duly recognized. And believe me, it will be an aberration if you come this far and we cannot give you a token of what Thomas Adewumi has to offer. So we'll just calmly sit and listen to the interlude. Thank you. City, Oko, Kwara State, the knowledge hub for Nigeria and Africa at Thomas Adewumi University. We are dedicated to shaping the future of Nigeria and Africa through world-class education and innovation. Our mission is to provide a cutting-edge education that prepares our students for global relevance. We are proud to offer signature academic programs in science, technology, engineering, arts, medicine and innovation. Our campus is equipped with state-of-the-art facilities including modern laboratories, a cutting-edge library, studios, conducive accommodation, 
farm where our students can engage in agricultural activities and a water factory. We offer a wide range of degree programs and online courses with over 27 different programs. Our highly attractive and subscribed programs in nursing, physiotherapy, engineering and mass communication are designed to prepare our students for successful careers in these fields. Our programs are fully accredited by the National Universities Commission. Our fees are affordable while student loans are also accessible. Join us at Thomas Adewumi University, Okokwara State, where we nurture great minds and shape the future. For further information and application, please visit our website at www.tau.edu.ng. Thomas Adewumi University, powering progress in science, technology and medicine. Interlude. Taking us further, uh, this event is uh, Goodwill Messages. Yes, and also before the Goodwill Message, it is also good to um, take note in part of the introduction of guest that engineer Tony Le Adoragba de Mogaji Muse is representing engineer Yusuf Larry de Sagayazana of Ilorin. We say you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, thank you very much. We will love to invite our, um, yes, our mother now, because University of Ilorin has been backing us for since the existence of Tomo Sadeumi University. So we'll be calling the Vice Chancellor of University of Ilorin, Professor Wai, to please come. Ah, sorry, Wahab. Wahab Egbewole to please come and give the goodwill message. Professor Wahab Egbewole. He is also a renowned legal practitioner. We say you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Kabiesi, Kadi Pelori Ki Batakpanese. The first distinguished public university, Professor Yusuf Olaolu Ali, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, the founder Thomas Adewumi University, the Vice Chancellor Thomas Adewumi University, Learned Senior Advocates of Nigeria here are present, the principal officers of uh, the various universities. I recognize the Vice Chancellor Kwasu, the Registrar Kwasu, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, University of Ilori, the Registrar and Secretary to Council, University of Ilori, the University Liberian, the Acting Bossa and the employer, Professor Fawali, the member of the Governing Council, the members of Galib Chambers, the scholars of Thomas Adewumi University, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a great pleasure to be part of this epoch-making occasion. And we congratulate our sister university especially we appreciate the doggedness and the commitment of the leadership as led by Professor Francisca Oladipo, the Vice Chancellor of Thomas Adewu University for putting this together. And it is important to underscore the point that uh, was made by the pro-chancellor that lectures of this nature are very important in the development of our education because it creates the synergy between the gown and the town and the gown cannot exist without the town therefore there must be constant engagement between 
the two. Thomas Ade University has come of age, and we are pleased to be part of this success story. And let me assure you on behalf of the University of Illinois that we will continue to do our best to support your university. And as KU8, we have also decided to ensure that this does not even stop here, this lecture. We will circulate it in all the universities, the eight plus, and uh, ensure that it even goes beyond the KU8. We will send it to the Committee of Vice Chancellors of Nigerian Universities because we believe that issues have been raised in this lecture that will shape it and further re-engineer the education sector in Nigeria. The guest lecturer, thank you so very much for giving this to us. Congratulations, Vice Chancellor. Thank you so much, sir, for that apt goodwill message. Taking us further in the spirit of the goodwill message, I have the singular honor to invite to the microphone His Royal Majesty Oba Abdurrahim Oladele Adeoti, the Olomu of Omoaro, Kabieseo. The chairman of Thomas Adeu University, the chancellor, John's, Dr. Johnson, my royal father colleagues, all other important dignitaries in this room, I say good afternoon to all. Uh, for we, the rural fathers, incidentally, the traditional rulers was the first point of contact that the rural lecturer knocked on the head. That we were discussing Yoruba in the Trader Council as if he was sitting with us. Uh, my colleagues I can remember when we debated at the Report Traditional Council that we should be speaking in Yoruba and writing the report in Yoruba. But unfortunately, we, could we couldn't improve from the existing system. Because at the end of the day, we have to report to the Minister of Local Government and probably higher body. So we, we, we speak in Yoruba, but we write the minutes of meeting in English. Now there is a particular factor raised in the paper, lack of resources and funding for decolonization efforts. This is the bane of requirements in Nigeria. For every sector of the economy, the balance is no finance. It has turned to a balance, that of finance. And you will imagine the population is increasing every day, but the infrastructural facilities is decreasing. And we are clamoring for a sustainable economy, environment, sustainable living. How do we accomplish this with all the problems surrounding us? In those days, for those that went to higher school, that used to be a back of general paper, we are Lingua Africa, Lingua Africa, a language for Africa, was already debated. That when shall we have our own language in Africa? I think that may be going to macro. Reduce, to, reduce it to Nigeria. Can we derive a language, a single, just one language, from the three major dialects or tribes that we have in Nigeria? I think the paper has raised it. Why we should be more serious? In Nigeria. In those days, because you can't speak good English, you are a failure. That is the attribute. Once you don't speak English, 
then you don't, you, you are not the one, you can't comprehend with anything because that was introduced language. You see, any country that is colonized by Britain, and you take both their religion and language, I'm sorry, this is where you find, and this is where we find ourselves now. India was also colonized by Britain, but they refused to take their language, and they refused to take their religion. See how progressing India is. This Chinese, India, and Nigeria, we used to be in the third world, the third world, is that correct? But we don't want to say third world. We, we are now saying we are a developing nation. And are we actually developing? I don't know. Professor Ali is there to assess for us, legally for that matter. Yes, the problem is misplacement of priorities in Nigeria. We don't know what is next to be done. Of recent, there used to be, there's supposed to be a debate in China on climate change and global warming. And we presented almost the same candidates with China. What is the budget for China? What is that of Nigeria? Is there any basis for comparison? Is there any parity with China budget and Nigeria budget? This is food for thought for all of us. Undue emphasis on politics. You will see a graduate coming from the university and he will tell you he wants to be a politician. So by implication, you have we the, the government of the day has succeeded in making politics viable than any other profession. Professor Ali said it when they came with their, uh, the, 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 the colonial master. It was arts, pure arts, and maybe humanities. Was there anything for like technology or engineering? Very few. So the few people that, those of that read in the 60s, the fortunate ones like uh, Dr. Are they women? And uh, you see what is doing for the, co for the community. So, uh, Professor Egbe Wale said the district be passed to universities. I beg, let there be many copies to the National Assembly. Thank you and God bless. Also, representing the Vice Chancellor of Landmark University, we have Dr. S.J. Adebi. We we'll say you're welcome. We we'll say you're welcome, sir. We want to equally recognize the presence of uh, all Oloko Council of Chiefs and the ODA OCO, that is OCO Development Association. You are most welcome and thank you. Taking the last goodwill message is Dr. Felicia Awolola, the Deputy Director. Quara Polytechnic. Thank you very much, sir. God bless you. And Quara said Polytechnic is also saying that for Thomas Adewumi University Oku here, we're your friends. And in any way that Quara State Polytechnic may be useful to you, we are ready to assist you. And therefore, I say best of luck and best wishes from my rector. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much, ma'am. Believe me, I think we have not only gotten uh, an erudite professor as our first distinguished lecturer, but we have gotten someone else, apart from our founder, uh, just like I said earlier, that a tree does not make a forest. I think for engineer Dr. Adewumi and Professor uh, and Professor, our distinguished lecturer, we think that their tree have made a forest, and now they are making wildlife. We say thank you very much for your time. And very fast, we are going to be inviting our royal father of the day, that is the Oloko of Oko, for 
the vote of thanks, is we are going to be inviting him to come and do the royal thanksgiving and appreciate each and every one that has made it to this program. So, we applaud as he's coming forward, Oba His Royal Majesty, Oba Victor Olawi, for the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, firstly, I want to thank God for making it possible for us to gather here today. I want to thank uh, Dr. J.B. Adewumi for this laudable project you brought to the community. I, I wonder what will have been in this bush, if not because of this project you brought to this community. These dignitaries might not know this community, if not because of this project. I want to thank you for making this community to be relevant among the communities in Kwara State. The Lord will continue to be with you. You will succeed in all ramifications in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank our guest speaker for the lecture you gave this afternoon. You gained a lot, and I pray all the, all the ideas you brought will come to, will come to manifestation. People will listen along I make use of this lecture you've delivered today in Jesus' name. I want to thank my royal fathers, the VC. Sorry, I joined the product. The VC, you are doing a great in this job. You are doing a very great job in this school. The Lord will continue to be with you. You will definitely succeed. I want to thank the royal fathers that are here this afternoon. Your domain will continue to know progress in Jesus' name. Thanks to everybody. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, KBAC. Like the saying, whatever has a beginning must definitely have an end. So we are moving gradually towards the end of this event. Leading us in the announcement, I have the privilege to invite to the microphone the University Registrar, Mr. Ile Ladewa Solomon. Thank you very much. The Chancellor, sir, standing on the existing protocol, I count it a privilege to bring to our cognizance this afternoon. We'd like to appreciate our guests for coming down here to celebrate with us. And to our erudite professor, thank you, sir, for that wonderful and loaded uh, presentation. We, we do not take it for granted. Uh, we'd like to bring to our notice admission for TAU 2023-2024 is still ongoing. Uh, for some of us with the program, let's check over leave. We see uh, programs for the universities and in case you need more help, you can get the phone numbers. So, we are everywhere. I want to assure you your words, your children, your candidates are saved with TAU. So kindly subscribe to TAU. Also, I would like to bring to the knowledge of our guests, with the permission of the Chancellor, we're going to have a tour at the Faculty of Law at our West Campus as we derope after this program. Please, let's put that at the back of our mind. Also, all things are expected, things of our courses are expected to support the tour. Likewise, after the tour at the Faculty of Law of our West Campus, the lunch comes up also too. Thank you and do enjoy your day. We wish you a safe journey down to your various destinations. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I will implore us, even when it's looking like we should not end this wonderful lecture. Yes, we do have to. So I will implore us all to rise as we take Thomas Adewumi University Anthem. Please let's rise as we take Thomas Adewumi University Anthem.
Let's be seated as we depart, but we're going to be taking it in the reverse order. The guest lecturer is going to be going first, followed by the vice chancellor, then the deans of the various faculty, university scholars, and we have the chief security officers. The deans are to follow the vice chancellor, the different, the various things of various faculties, please. Then followed by the university scholars, then the chief security officer.
Thank you very much. All our distinguished guests are expected to move to the university. After the exchange of pleasantries, please let's move to the council chamber. Please, we can as well follow the entourage of the founder just as it proceeds at the left corner. We can follow the entourage of the founder as we proceed to the council chamber. Thank you very much. Check, check after. 